Let us take our seats. He who was seated on the throne said, I'm making everything new. Then he said, Light this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. They will be, I will be their God, and they will be my children. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Today we are looking at resurrection hope. Last week we looked at the resurrection power and we were reminded that uh, the basis of our Christian faith is resurrection. And as Jesus resurrected, we were also reminded that the power that raised Jesus from the dead is within us. And therefore, as Christians, we should be encouraged in the midst of all what is happening around us. We should be encouraged to know that because he lives, we can face tomorrow. And because he is alive, we will also be victorious in Jesus' name. As we focus on this, this book of Revelation that was written by John the Leverator, the island at Patmos, the island of Patmos, was a vision that he, show, he, he saw. And this vision was to just give us a glimpse of how heaven will be. This is the hope that we have, and this is the hope that chapter 21 gives us, those who believe that the, indeed the resurrection reminds us that the Lord seated on the throne is saying, I am making everything new. It is hard to believe under the circumstances that we are in and where we find ourselves. If you open the pages of our newspapers and read from page one to the last, it is like a book of lamentation. When you listen to the television and listen to the news, it's another book again of lamentation. When you look at the Facebooks and the platforms that are there that people are using, you cannot help it but to wonder and ask ourselves, where is our hope? But in the midst of all of that, and we have not been spared in the political arena. And when you listen to all of that and take a glimpse of all of that, you can't help but to ask ourselves, where are we going? Where is our hope? Today, I want to redirect our thoughts in a few minutes, taking us to the word of God, because that is where our hope is. And the Lord who resurrected is saying, I am making everything new. So it does not matter what we are going through. That means I am changing things in your life. We may not know it, but we want to believe it, that God is true to his word, that he is making everything new. We believe what the word of God has said. And this is what John the Leverator was told. Light this down, for these words are trustworthy and tell true. We can trust the word of God. We may not be able to trust the media. We may not be able to trust the words of men. But we can trust the word of God because it is trustworthy and it is true. When the Lord says... I'm making everything new. Yes, indeed, he is. And we are reminded again by Isaiah, he is making everything new. Can't you perceive it? And that is what the Lord wants of us. And reminds us that in this life that we live and the life to come, 
He is saying, your life is in my hands. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So members, we are not lost. Our lives are in safe hands. Our lives are with God who created us right from the very beginning and who will be with us in eternity. And in between here, he is still God with us. But we can see as we look in the word of God, there are many challenges that drift us away from the presence of God or from experiencing the power and the hope of resurrection. The first scenario that we see is the scenario in the book of Isaiah in chapter 6. And we see Isaiah saying and confessing and saying, When King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Because Uzziah was an obstacle, was a hindrance between prophet Isaiah and God. And I submit to all of us today that we have so many obstacles that we need to deal with in life that hinder us from the presence of the Lord, that we are not able to see well. Remember, Isaiah said, when King Uzziah died, and King Uzziah is a representation of the things that separate us with God. And those things could be bitterness, it could be revenge, it could be lack, sometimes it could be sicknesses, it could be conflict of relationships, it could be betrayal, you know, it could be living in offense. Whatever it is that is Uzziah, it needs to die so that we can see clearly who God is. And in that, as we read further, Isaiah described who God was as he saw him after King Uzziah died. That's the only time after we let go of those things that hinder us and separate us with God. It's the only time that we have a clear perspective and vision of who God is. This is what he reminds us, that God is powerful. He was able now to see the power of God he was able to see the greatness of God, and he was also able to see the mystery of God. And it didn't add there. After that realization and recognition of who God was, then what did he do? He recognized his sinfulness before God. He recognized his sinfulness before God. And as you read Isaiah chapter 6, he confessed his sins before God and said, Oh Lord, I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. Brothers and sisters, this is the power of resurrection. When we encounter our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we cannot help it but to submit to the authority of God and say, here I am, forgive me, O God. Many of us have refused to own up, and we hold on and we say, I can do it myself. But I submit to all of us, as Isaiah gave in and said, here I am, a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. We need to do the same if we want to experience the resurrection hope, then we need to do the same. We need to allow our God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be God and forgive us because resurrection reminds us of forgiveness. And that is why the liberator is saying it is done. It is not done for all, but it is done for those ones who have believed. It is done for those ones who have acknowledged their sins and they have accepted the forgiveness of God. And let me tell you, after Isaiah did that, then what happened next? He was released to serve God. If you read further in chapter 6, then the word came 
and said, Whom will I send? And quickly Isaiah said, me, Send me, O Lord. We are reminded that until we are forgiven and our relationship with the Lord is established, then it becomes very difficult to serve God. When we receive that which God has given unto us as a package of forgiveness, then we are free to serve the Lord. And that is the power and the hope we have of resurrection. Resurrection should motivate us to do God's work. For indeed, there is hope. Even after we labor, we know that our labor in the Lord is not in vain. We are reminded by the book of 1 Corinthians in chapter 15, verse 58. And therefore, we are told, therefore, be movable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, for your labor in the Lord is not in vain. It can only be motivated by the hope of resurrection, that even though nobody acknowledges, nobody sees what I do in the service of the Lord, I want you to know, as I tell myself, there is God in heaven who notices. It is not in vain. No wonder, then in the book of Hebrews, reminds us, the Lord reminds us again, as we work, God is not unjust that he can forget our labor of love. Hebrews 6, 10. God is not unjust that he can forget our labor of love. That comes from knowing Christ died and resurrected, and it is not in vain. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and I know by the end of this, oh, I know I will see him. I myself, I'll see him with my own eyes, and I know I'll give an account of what I have done with what he entrusted unto me. It should be a motivation. So wherever you are, whoever you are, every one of us have something to do. There is something that God has given unto you. When you come into the family of the body of Christ, I pray that in Jesus' name, the Lord will reveal to you what he wants you to do in the vineyard. And all of us, we will work together. And when our days come to an end, and we wake up on the other side, and when the role is called up order, and we wake up on the other side, then we'll be told we have rested from all our labors. Having said that, I wish all of us are reading from that script. And we see the challenge then in the book of Luke and chapter 24. The disciples after Jesus was hung on the cross and buried and then resurrected on the third day. We were reminded that... Um, they were told, even by women who went to, and we know the ladies who went to the tomb, is Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus. And they came and they brought the word to the disciples and told them that Jesus has resurrected. But these guys did not believe. They took it casually. When they were walking to a mouse from Jerusalem, let me remind us and let me help us to understand this move and the imprecation of this move. Jerusalem is the city of God. A mouse is running away from God. And we know what that means when we move away from God because of disappointment. They were disappointed. They were in despair. They were feeling hopeless and helpless. And their lives, they had come to an end. And they were in wonder, trying to translate. But the worst mistake they did 
was to move from the presence of God to go far away from God. And many of us could ask, how could they do that? We find ourselves doing it all the time because of the challenges of life, because we are disappointed and sometimes we even wake up disappointed in the morning and say, I'm not going to church today. How many of us say that, hands down? Because I don't feel like it, I feel burdened, I am not happy, I feel kind of depressed. You know, there are so many things. Maybe you have argued with somebody and there is, you know, kind of a conflict. And you feel, I am not going to go to church. May I tell us and may I submit to us, even when things are hard and difficult, please let us remain in the presence of the Lord. But Jesus, this is what resurrection did. Jesus identified and knew exactly what was happening. And on their way to a mouse, they didn't even get to a mouse. Jesus did not want them to get to a mouse because he knew if they get to a mouse, then destruction awaits. And so on the way, he caught up with them. And he journeyed with them. I want to submit to us in the frustration, in the depression, in the lack, in the desperation, in the helplessness, in the hopelessness, in sickness, in whatever it is that we are going through. May I remind us that our God is with us. We are not alone. And all what he wants is to journey with us. And I pray that in Jesus' name, you and me, we who are Christians, we are not going to be overwhelmed by what we are going through, but we will allow the Lord to hold our hands and journey with us. Tell your neighbor, you are not alone. Yes, allow the Lord to hold your hand. Those moments that you feel alone, Remember, I am not alone, for the Lord is journeying with us. I may not be able to see him, but I believe. I believe. And I know if the Lord is for me, who can be? Who can be against me? No one. And therefore, we have hope in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But we must allow him to journey with us. My prayer is this, that the Lord will open our eyes, that we'll be able to recognize him and recognize his presence even as we journey in this life. There are many things that we have gone through in life and we think we have reached a dead end like the disciples. But I tell you, it is not over until God says it's over because he has the final say in your life. He has the final say in my life. I pray that we allow the Lord to journey with us. And my prayer for all of us is found in the book of Ephesians in chapter 1, verses 18 to 21. This is what Paul wrote. I pray that the eyes of our hearts be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the leeches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incorruptible great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he asserted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rules and authority power and dominion and every name that is evoked not only in the present age but also in the time to come. Today we are seated here and we are struggling in believing that things will change and you feel there is an obstacle between you and God. We want to pray with you. 
for these Uzias that are working hard to separate us with our God. Uzias of doubt, Uzias of fear that they will die in our lives and we embrace resurrection hope. If you need prayers, just stand where you are so that God will deal with these Uzias in our lives, in, those, in these obstacles. Some of them are generational. People think in my generation we don't do this, it doesn't happen in my family. The Lord wants to break the curses today. They are Uzias. These Uzias. So can we stand? Those who need prayers, I'll pray quickly as we finish. If you need prayers in your life for God to deal with any Uzia in our lives, just stand where you are. Just stand. Come by here, my Lord, come by here. Come by here, my Lord, come by here. Come by here, my Lord, come by here. Oh Lord, come by here. Come by here, my Lord, come by here. Come by here, my Lord, come by here. Come by here, my Lord, come by here. Oh Lord, come by here. Our Father and our God, that is our desire this day that you come by here, O oh God. As you pass by and walked by the disciples, we desire that you walk by us, O oh God. Many are times that we have so many things that are hindering us and blocking us from seeing you and recognizing you and noticing you. Jehovah, we release them to you. Those things, the Uzias that have made you stand, just voice them to God. Voice them to God. Voice them to God. Almighty and ever-living God, we have so many Uzias that are blocking us. Some of the Uzias are unforgiveness, bitterness, revenge, conflict, Jehovah, lack, mighty redeemer, fear of the unknown, anxiety, Jehovah God, mighty redeemer, some of it is sickness of this body, that the pain is so much, some of it is losses of our loved ones, oh God. And we look at life and it doesn't make sense and we are overwhelmed by the things that are happening in our lives, oh God. And we can no longer see clearly of your mighty power and greatness. And Jehovah, here we are this day. And to your hands we release all the Uzias, Jehovah, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that you break every chain in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Generational curses, we break them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Mighty Redeemer, I pray that your people will go back to the city of God. The disciples went back after encounter to Jerusalem. I pray that many of us will go back to the city of God, to your presence, O oh God, that we will desire to remain there, O oh King of glory. Help us, O oh God. Help us, O oh God. Help us, O oh God. Increase our faith, O oh Jehovah. Increase our faith this morning. And as we declare that the... the the old is gone and you have seen you are making everything new in our lives and we believe it in the name of Jesus. Even as a church, you are making everything new in the name of Jesus. Release us into your service, O Jehovah, that we will enjoy in your presence. There is hope, O God. We thank you, we worship you, and we adore you for every person who is studying because this is a new beginning. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.